happens when you put your trust in an individual, a company, and it's betrayed and violated in the worst possible way? I gave her the savings, knowing that she was actually going to take it to the circle. Until today, not even one day she ever told me that uh, that money is not there. My brother said, you have been conned. Conned in church, I, I can't believe this. There's what we call background check. If you are dealing with someone, you need to, to draft an agreement. If you are caught today, the first thing that you need to do is report to the police. Too. As you can see, I'm in an all new home. I have an amazing season lined up for you. Great topics, great guests, and of course, issues that are affecting young people. Well, on today's show, we kick off the season with the topic where my guests are saying, Tamima, I was conned, and it can happen to you too. It didn't break my heart, and apart from breaking my heart, actually it broke uh, the your whole family. family. Yeah. Because your wife, you separated. I'm interested in buying a car, and I'd like to promote a brother in this within this fellowship. You are telling me you're not doing a ninety. You can end a evil. 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 Bagasa. No, you are stuck. Evil. Thanks for tuning in. So today we are raising the alarm, raising the alarm on common cons in our country so that you can stay vigilant, protect yourself, protect your money, and in some cases, protect your heart. So help me invite my first guest, Peter Muridi, who is 45 years old. His was the worst kind of con because his wife, someone that he trusted, invested his future in, betrayed him in the worst possible way. Please help me welcome him to the show. I understand that for you, when you hear the word con, you actually say, I can tell you a story or two, eh? because mine was the ultimate con. Maybe please tell us more about that. Well, uh, there are so many forms of cons, and of course, you would, uh, no one would wish to be in such a situation. But uh, ideally, you just, one way or the other, when, when, once it's your day, you find yourself in such a situation. And uh, mine wasn't as a con as, like, you be conned by a con man in the, in the streets. Because you're vigilant. There's no way to a con the street. You're mm -hmm. vigilant. Very well. Uh, mine was something different because actually it is actually uh, involves someone very close to me. All my savings that I actually had saved, I entrusted in my wife. And I actually gave her in hope that... Uh, she was going to take the money to a circle. By and then, how many years had you been married to your wife? Huh? How many years had you been together with your wife? Uh, for um, close to 20 years. So the money I actually had uh, saved, I wanted her to actually go and uh, take it to a circle. So that uh, would take like, you know, when you save with a circle, most likely in most cases you'll be given like uh, three times of what you are saving, sir, uh, depending on the circle you are, you are into. So I... I gave her the savings, knowing that uh, she was actually going to take it to the circle. A little did I know that uh, that money was not going to end up in the right place. So, you were working abroad at that time? Mm hmm So, Iluku Kikfanya Kazi, every month you're sending some money to her? No, 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 no. I gave her bulk, like 100,000. And then, uh, uh, after some times, I gave her some other money I added onto her. Then uh, another, uh, 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 another uh, bunch of money I actually added into her and uh, in the hope that uh, she was actually going to remit the funds to uh, 
a sacco. So each time you would send the money, you would give her specific instructions. Mm -hmm. Kuna ile pesa unamtumia matumizi, mm -hmm. pengine ya watoto, mm -hmm. alafu kuna ingine ya kando. Mm -hmm. This money we have agreed together, it's mm -hmm. going to savings. Mm -hmm. And what would she tell you once she receives the money? Well, uh, to be quite honest, she told me that the following morning she was going to take the money. So I didn't have any doubt because it's someone you actually spent most of your life with. So you just agree and you're like, okay, you take the money. And uh, we had, a, we had a, 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 a time frame. And uh, that time frame was not based on uh, our agreement as a, as a couple. The time frame was uh, uh, the limitation that the, the circle gives. Right. Because if you want to have money with the circle, there's a, a period of time when you're told like, uh, you need to uh, like save for like six months or so. After six months had elapsed, when I sat her down, she was so confident and she told me, don't worry, you're the money is just coming. And I'm like, okay, good, no problem. So, so I waited for another man. Lying to you, yeah. knowing very well, mm -hmm. all those one, two, three, four times you're sending her the different amounts, 100,000 here, another 100 there, hapeleki. Hapeleki. na kwambia, au sijali. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pesa iko pale. Pesa iko. Actually, that's what, that's what she, she used to tell me. Oh, don't worry, the money is there. And uh, who was I to worry by then? Because that's I, your wife. I, my, that's my wife. And so, by that time, because she knew what had happened, uh, she decided to be a little bit hostile. And I sent there's something here that is not right. What was the ultimate red flag for you? That thing that you're like, okay, I've sent you money, money, and you're like, what was that thing in you that was like, this woman is lying to me? Well, uh, it, it also uh, ended up, or rather it came to my mind that uh, uh, three more ladies, one was her salonist, the one who used to do her hair, and uh, another lady, a friend lady of her. An unfortunate thing was that she was uh, actually a single mother. And uh, apart from being a single mother, um, she was expecting that money to go and pay the school fees for her daughter. And at some point, I really felt for her. But I had to cover for my wife. As a man, as a, you know, as a... As she's as the a, mother of your children. Yes, really you have to cover for someone you really care for. These three ladies, they had actually been uh, close to 300, over 350,000. It's a lot of money. Yes. And uh, these three ladies, did they, did they file formal complaints against your wife? Uh, yeah, they did, and actually it went to an extent that uh, she was even arrested. She was actually taken to a police station. And um, that was after I had even tried to cover for her. When these ladies came for, for their money uh, at my place, that is our home, and uh, it was a very unfortunate thing because they used to camp at my place. You know, my wife would come from work, anakuja mapema, anafanya shopping zake, then anaka kwa nyumba, anadifungia landani na watoto. And I knew that's what she used to. Until one day, this lady camped in my place. And I had to mobilize the, the, some security guys so that she could get uh, some freedom. Nimtoe. Personal minion nilimtoa. Nika mpelega kwa sister angu. Nika mficha. So what do, you, what do you tell your kids in that situation? Um, I'll be very honest with you. I've never discussed this issue with my kids. Uh, I have a, a teenage boy who is actually 20 years old. He knows the story, but I've never sat down to talk to him about this whole story. And uh, it quite, it didn't break my heart. And apart from breaking my heart, actually it broke uh, the your whole family. family. Yeah. Because your wife, you separated. Uh, yeah, we are separated right now. Do you think that you can ever trust a woman, a wife, again to that extent? Um, you cannot put a blanket condemnation on all women. Because not all women are like that. And. Uh, as a man, you really have to gather your, uh, yourself together, put yourself together, and uh, even moving on has been very difficult for me. It's been like four years since this happened. Mm. Okay, so still more to come here on Real Talk on this topic tonight. My guests are saying I was conned, it can happen to you, 
please be vigilant. Remember, you can get on that hashtag, hash field talk with Chamima. Let us know what your views, comments, and questions on today's topic are. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>
650,000 Kenya shillings. Yes. What next? Now, um, I was excited, of course, waiting for my car. Like, in two weeks' time, I'll be cruising. <laughs> Which model was this car? <laughs> Toyota Auris. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so then um, we wait. I, I, my brother told me, like, in, in a, a day or two, the guy should be able to email you all those papers from the, the, the other side. I don't understand this car logistics. But in another one week, he had not emailed anything. So in two weeks' time, where's my car? Stories begin. That was the first red flag. Yes, stories begin. Mm -hmm. it, it's on the way, it's coming, there are some delays. Then in another two weeks again, now four weeks. Now that's a month. Yes, the car is not yet here. What happened to the car? I have not seen any documents showing that you paid for this car. Where is this car? It, 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 it gave me just stories that so could not... So this yeah. time you're dealing just with the dealer? Yes. Had you brought in the person who introduced you to the dealer? Not yet. Because they told me it, it surely takes six weeks, so I was being patient. Okay. Yes. So after six weeks, then I involved this, uh, the leader of the fellowship, now the, the guy who introduced me. So when I told him, he told me to relax. The car will, will come. Yeah? This guy was already... Uh, has already brought cars for other members of the church, so don't, don't worry, it will be there. At that point, but, did you think, yeah. since initially how he hooked you was telling you, I know a guy, mm -hmm. he's actually brought cars for other people within the church. Yes. Did it hit you maybe, I need to go back and figure out who are these people? Yeah. Because 650,000 Kenya shillings, that's a lot of money. No, no, it didn't hit me at that point. I was still very uh, uh, trusting, I think, up to about 80% there, but I was having doubts, like 20% doubts. So because uh, he's your church leader. Yes. Um, yes. The guy who referred me, I know him too well. Mm -hmm. So I said, I, I relied on his word that the car will come. So that was six weeks. When it reached the eighth week, I involved my brother. My brother told me, ask that guy who was doing import to at least show you papers. There were no papers. So my brother said, uh, as, as hard that as uh, you may find this, you have been conned. Well, how did that make you feel? I cried. 650,000 <laughs> Kenya shillings. I cried, but I, I, there again I was a little hesitant, like conned in church, I, I can't believe this. Because who you, think you'd you, get conned in church? Yeah, but, but it was like, you and your church people, <laughs> you should get to know these people. Mm -hmm. They are just people. That's what he said. So I said, I, I don't get how I can be conned in church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your brother has told you you've been conned. A yes. part of you is now accepting. Yes. But you know, usually in, they, they call them the five stages of grief. <laughs> There is yeah. now where there's still some denial. Did mm -hmm. you reach out to the church leader just to tell him, okay, you introduced me to this person. Can you intervene? The, the fellowship leader. You yes. know there are fellowships within the church. Yes, so the fellowship, fellowship leader. already knew at that point. But, mm -hmm. but before I even went to my brother, I already told this, this, this fellowship leader. So uh, when it reached two months, I threatened them. I told them, now I'm going to involve now the overall leader of the church. And I'm going so to So you're tell. still keeping it within the church. You yes. didn't go file a... No. A formal complaint. No. Two months down the line, I'm still very patient. So I'm just following like protocol. So I'm like, I'm going to tell now the overall leader that you people have conned me. Yeah. Then they were they persuaded. They were like, no, you just wait, wait. I know it will arrive. So at that particular point, yeah. uh, the leader of the fellowship, the one who introduced me to this guy, really pleaded that it should not go that far. Yeah. But I was other man, so I met with the leader of the church and I narrated the same way I'm narrating here. He said, as long as this guy is my congregant, don't worry, your money will return. We shall pray about it. I, I refuse to accept that. So you refuse to accept prayer will return your money? I refuse to accept that. You wanted the money hard cash? I wanted him to go like, uh, you know, we need to go to police or legal or something. I didn't believe in that. I think my, my level of faith had gone so, like, so down. Because it's a lot of money. Yes. So did so you ever recover your money? I did. I plus interest plus some damages. You filed a formal complaint? Yes. I told the church leadership, I'm not listening to this. I'm going ahead. I'm going to report to the police. And I'm involving an advocate. 
So the advocate drafted a demand notice, and I told this guy who was bringing me the car that we need to meet, but he didn't know about what. So he, he turned up. So at that time I was with my brother, and that witness was there. So we were four of us. I just delivered that to him, and they were in shock. So and you I served them officially? Yes. yes. Then they also engaged their advocate, the other side, and now it became, then after that, he became so slippery, he could not be traced, so uh, and, and engaged some police. We, are try, we were trying to track him. So my going to church was not to go and pray, but to go and track this con. So after how long did you finally get your money back? Six months. Six months. And yes. how much money did you get back? 850. Oh, with interest? Yes. Look at that. <laughs> Okay, so I want to look, and we have two experts with us today. We have Sam Dongo, who is a security analyst, and we have Elliot Ngugi, who is an advocate of the High Court. Now, un unfortunately, uh, Linda's story has now become very commonplace. There are so many cases of, especially young Kenyans, who have now made it, you know, they want a car, they trust the wrong people, and the reality is not everyone is as fortunate as Linda, that you get to get your money back and with interest for the time that they wasted. So let me just bring in, uh, let me start with Elliot, because Elliot, you work as an advocate of the High Court. Yes. So her, her case is ideally the ideal, because she was able to recover her money after the con, right? Yes. Her case is ideal, and uh, at least she took some action. What happens with a lot of us as Kenyans is that we get conned and we start thinking around it, and we don't first of all report to the police, because the police are able to track uh, even the SIM and the, uh, the signals and follow up that person. So if you are caught today, the first thing that you need to do is report to the police, and the police will be able to track that. But even before uh, the police are involved, if you are dealing with someone, for example, purchasing property or buying a car, you need to, to draft an agreement. You need to sit down, uh, even a simple agreement between the two of you. An agreement is any, uh, um, any, uh, any, any writing uh, that has to be witnessed of what you are going to do together. So sit down together. If you are going to buy the car, the, uh, the make of the vehicle, the amount of money to be, to be paid to the person, and get a witness to see, uh, to witness your signatures. And once you have this agreement with you, keep a copy and let the other person keep a copy so that in case they forfeit to pay your money, you are able to go to the police station, present that formal document to show uh, that this is what has happened to you. Linda, I'm sure that for you was very helpful, the fact that you had the contract. Yes, but I would have missed it because uh, you remember when we met the first time on a Sunday, after the church service, I was just ready to like. To, yeah. Yeah. So it was good luck on your part. Yes. Let me bring in um, Sam. So many guys are trying to buy cars. They've not done their background around the credible companies. So listening to her story, at which point should she have seen the first red flag? The f first, I don't blame the guy whom you approached. You are a church fellow. Yeah. Maybe he introduced to these guys. They were, you know, him knowing that they have done business before. But the minute that these guys told you that you meet, not in an office, not in a place that it, you'll be able to track where they are, you should have at least tried to carry some background check on them, on the company, on the name they used. And uh, I hear you said the, you drafted something. There was an agreement. Yeah. Yes, you should have carried the background check on the agreement to see if it is a rigid person, if it is a rigid business. Secondly, you should have... Yes, you try to follow up and you are patient, and uh, that is basically what happens, because in business you have to be patient, you are patient. And uh, the next time, or maybe someone who is conned, what we do is we shy away from uh, going forward, reporting to the police, or even talking to a friend to say that I'm doing this business, and uh, can you please advise, to, to, uh, advise me? Because uh, in the first instance, I think you should have at least taken the break, told him, let me consult with someone, maybe my advocate, or even talk to a friend, and take a break, talk to someone. And then you have 
been given steps on okay. how to go about it. Thank you, Sam. Now, I want to introduce my next guest, who is Henry Njuguna. So Henry, like Linda and Peter as well, has also been conned, but for him, it was an in institutionalized con. So please help me welcome him to the show. So Henry is here, here with us. Henry, I, I think I'd like to see your face a bit more because <laughs> you seem very young. And I'm just looking at the figures here that you unfortunately could be at the brink of losing. 300, 385,000 Kenya shillings, that's a lot of money. So probably tell me how you found yourself in the situation where you're not sure whether your money is safe or not. First, I would like to, to tell uh, that the money that is in, this, in, the, in that circle, we used to save it with my mom. She's in diaspora, so I was like the person who used to represent her in all the activities of the circle. Like when she sends the money through maybe M-Pesa, I would go to the circle offices and update the, the passbook because that was one of the rules of the circle. That's how uh, I ended up being the person to follow up. Because my mom is a single mom, so she, she has no one else to follow up her money. And my, her money is also like her, my, my money. Yeah. So at which point did you now have to tell your mom that, OK, this money that you have been sending to me and I have been saving with the circle is now at risk? Uh, she used to know that the money was being saved there, and we had a plan of buying a car from the circle. Now when it, it reached a time when she told me to go to the circle, apply a loan so that we can get a car. Now, uh, the loan was to take, uh, I think, around at most one week, but it took almost like three months. First, you have to, to deduct the fee. There are fees that you have to deduct, and the fees are deducted from your own savings. So we had to duck around 90,000 Kenya shillings to cater for, the, for all that was needed for us to acquire a car. We were patient, we waited for that, but when we were almost getting the loan, after all was done, the, the valuation of the car, everything, and we knew who, which car we were, we were to purchase, now that's when the, the breakdown of that particular circle came along. Okay, so we also have other people from the same circle who unfortunately are also at the risk of losing their hard-earned savings. We have James Mbugwa. So James, uligundua aje kuhusu hui sako? Nilikutana mwaja wale wa inye wana walikuwa na advertise sako on the streets. So, nikajipata pale, nimejitisign in, na nikaanza kusave na wawo. So wale ambao walikuwa na kuambia juu ya hii sako, walikuwa nasema vitu, vitu vizuri? Yeah, positive things. So ukaenda pale, uka sign up? Yeah. Na nikaanza kusave na wawo. So ulisave na wawo kwa muda gani? Ni June 2015. So hiyo ni karibu miaka nne? Yeah. Uh, ulikuwa umeka pesa ngapi? Nikuwa nimesave na wawo about 200,000. Na hiyo pesa leo, ukiona, unona kama hiyo pesa utaipata? Okay, nili save na all about 200,000 because they were saying that, that okay, save the W, they, they want to pay three times of your saving. So my, po my point was, ni pata gari. Nili anda pale, ni kapata gari, but before ni pata gari, wani zulusha, zulusha hapa na pale. So huko na gari? Nili pata yo gari, then later I realized that these, these people wame ni peleka fa, pozi point yenye sifa ikuwa. Because pale nikuta kulikuwa na hidden charges zenye na wako wanasema. So later alone nikasema, wacha tu niuza igari, minu ondoke. So nikauza gari. So the person mwenye niliuzia gari, alinipia a check. Nikaenda na nika deposit kwa wawo. So niki ni ondo, nipate my saving back. But later alone I didn't get anything. So where is Sandu umeenda loss? Yeah, I'm getting a loss. So we also have with us here David Kamau, still from the same circle, same experience. David, so you also heard about the circle from friends, I'm assuming? Yeah. I got, I, I got the information from the media. From it, the media? Yeah, and I trusted the media so much. So a radio station? Yeah, a radio station. And they were really selling the benefits of being a member? Of course, yes, you know the sweet words you give us. So you got hooked? Of course, yes. Went, became a member, and then what happened? Yeah. And I started saving my, uh, my hard-earned money 
from 50 bob, 100, 1,000, up to more than 200,000. So were there any benefits that you feel like, okay, I may have saved this money, but I got this out from that circle? Of course, I had a plan. You know, they just tell you they will, they, they will multiply you by three, three times. So I wanted to save like 500,000, and then I wanted to buy a shamba. So yako ilikuwa shamba? Yep. So they were offering very good rates of for course, members yes. who wanted to acquire property? Of course, yes. Because they were selling, that was, they were giving large that were in a prominent places. So today, wh where do you think your dreams of owning a shamba are? Oh, my, my dreams have been sh shattered now. And I feel conned. Because the, 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 as I tried to follow the, the, the issue of the following the money or the, the loan, I was given stories, stories after stories. Okay, so if I had to ask you, because I'm sure that there are hundreds, in fact thousands in this case of Kenyans like yourself, who are also following up their money with this circle, have you guys come together perhaps for a class action suit? Of course, yes, we have tried. We have organized, we as victims, and we, we are facing the circle. So we'll be taking a very quick break. When we come back, our experts will be putting this institutionalized type of conning into perspective. Don't go too far. <laughs> Without you knowing, you'll give your ID number, you'll give your account number, you'll give your a, a PIN number, and before you know it, you don't have any money in your account. You have to to Welcome back to Real Talk. Remember our topic today is I was conned, don't be a victim. And that's the thing, guys. You know, usually you'll think that it can never happen to me. That's why it's called a con. A lot of the times you don't see it coming. But today we are going to empower you. We have Elliot, we have Sam in studio. So they're going to show you what does the law say. And from also from a security point of view, how can you remain vigilant? So I just want to sample my audience right now. Who has been conned? Toko nyumbani, ni kuja Nairobi town, kwa na shughuli zangu. Sasa juu, macha ya na pasia ni kangali, angali ya pale kwa wini, kifanya winda shopping tu, kwa masimu hapa wafia center. Nikipita hivo, nikapata kakijana tu kadogo, kama 18 years, 19. Kaimbia madhu, nita ku, kuangalia simu. Hii simu ni mzuri sana hapa kwa winda shopping hapa tu. Kanimbe, lakini kuna yangu hapa, ni smart sana, lakini kusia bi mzuri. He, na ni touch. Na mini yoni kuna ya button. Kasema guys, nitangukia. Yo mimi huyu akani tukatembea na yeye. Tukatembea na yeye na kuona kinyongoleza pole pole. Tu nikijana mdogo mzuri. Tukaenda, tukapanda, nikikuja hapa Kencom. Kanyambia sasa, acha nikutolea laini. Uone uone yani usikivi linaongea. Pigia mtu. Nikapigia mtu. Akaniambia sasa sikusi pesa mingi. 2200. Nikamwambia niko na 1500. Kanimbia hapana ongeza. I <laughs> Na hiyo 100 nilikuwa na kama fear nikasema no acha tu nimpatie katika hali ya kutafuta hiyo 100 kumbe simu ananipatia kaniambia watu wasione na mimi naye araka na kushika simu kwa kwa bag hata namba sasa nipatia namba yake hata niuzie nyingine tena nikaweka nikapanda kupanda sasa nikitembea hivi acha niangalie kama ni si ni simu ilikuwa ya red kuangalia nikapata ni black ni simu <laughs> ni black acha niana nikae niangalie simu guy Nikapata ndani ni matopi ile imeshikana kwa imefunikwa. Nikata siku kaa hiyo tisma nilikuwa naenda sikuenda nikarudi nyumbani na sikuambia mtu hata mmoja. <laughs> I think usually when you get conned Up you get moment hiyo simu niko nayo paka saa hii kwa nyumbani. <laughs> Kama memory. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, let's hear from Mama next to you. Nilikuwa nafanya kazi na kampuni moja. Nika nika retrenjiwa kutoka nje sasa sikuwa nimeelewa town sana sababu nilikuwa area industrial area. Mama mwingine akaniambia, "Mama wewe kimbia town kuna bank nyingine mbia ime ime inasaidia watu ngamza kivipi ni unaingiza pesa mahali alafu unalipwa double ngamza ni benki gani kaniambia ni kama sako lakini utakucha kueleswa sasa kukakimbia nikakufika hapo ukiwa kengo mapo napanda tu juu kidogo kuna vis nyingine ilikuwa hapo juu naitwa excelas hata niko na receipt sasa nikalipa pesa elipo 100 sasa manager amenifundisha amenifundisha mama hii sasa hata kama umetoka kazi utasaidika kabisa. Wewe unaona 1100 inakuzalia 1200 sasa. Eh nikasema hii elibu 200 zita na mtoto alikuwa ameingia form 1 national school. Wacha nikimbie ni toy ile elibu 3 imepaki kwa bank. Kwa sababu ilikuwa nimelipwa nusu milioni. Nikakimbiza nikaleta yote nikaweka. Sio hiyo ni 1400. Yote elibu 400 sijui na 90 ikaenda hivyo. 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 Paka sasa. Ni washtaki. Hivyo. Uliwashtaki hao watu baadaye. Tulitembea tembea tapaka sahi tuko kotini sijui kama tutalipwa ama niaje mama. Okay. Hmm? That's why we have Sam and Elliot in the audience. Let's, let's hear from this side. Naitwa Livanze Felix. Uh -huh. Mimi nilikuwa naishi umoja kwa sister yangu. Sasa nimetoka hivyo nenda Buruburu kutafuta hasa nikapata na wasa wawili wamevaa suti. Wako na gari ya Vox nikajua eh hao sasa wananikaribia nikaa hasa nimeivana wanaweza niti niti wakaniambia ndio hasa liko lakini ni kwenda kutengeneza tent Jericho kuna chachi iko Jericho sasa si nikaingia kwa gari juni washaniambia ni punch na boy chal punch ni domi domingi nikaenda wakafika hapo Jericho kaniambia ndio confirm kama umeka viti nda, ndani kumbe wasa walikuwa na haja na Phoenix kangu wasa walikuwa wamevaa suti hata wengi amini wanaweza kwa Maconman na sasa inajua na niona <laughs> Simba. <laughs> Mungu anawaona. <laughs> Mungu anawaona. Okay, now we have Barry. Barry lost the phone. Where is Barry? Very quickly. Yeah, my name is Barry. So, it happened that I was coming from school and up for archives. I made this old man. Seriously, I'm dressed vizuri and he told me, "Oh, mimi nimetoka Kitui. I want 200,000. Kwa hizi vitu zashinda hapa za tao." So nikasema okay I'll help you. So akaniambia ndaka kujua hiyo hiyo nyumba iko wapi hiyo building. He goes to collect the cash. So nikasema okay ni saa tu ndakupeleka and then akaniambia ile to make sure amenishika. He told me I'll give you 10% of the cash. Ah uh, ukaona okay, hapa lazima Ay, ufanye eh? Nikasema watu Instagram amtaka na amani. <laughs> so with that 20k unajua venye tuko sahi my youth man we have the time we don't have the cash. So nikasema hapo hivyo nimeangukia tukaenda he was like apana wale watu wamenitishia so nataka tutumia a different route alafu wewe ndio uende nikasema ni saa tu tukaenda tukajificha mahali so akanitolea hizo cards tatu and he is like ziweke ndani ya bag ndio upande nazo huko juu i'm like why so akalenga lenga minuel kasema anyway sasa ndio ndio ubaki na ndio nibaki na kitu nyenye nitakuaminia at least nipatie phone yako ama id ama some cash ndio nikuamini nikachora hapo nikaanza kufikiria but mimi ni nani 20k ni pesa mingi bana so i gave him my phone and it was worth 15k so mimi nikapanda juu but niko na ile manzeu jamaa tahepa na sima mlek like, manzeu jamaa ni mzee hawezi <laughs> so i went kufika huko juu naambia shika nimeangukia tumeangukia umeangukia nini like sini 20k no like this is fraud this imestikiwa hapa hivi na akaitoanisha and I was like nimeisha simu imeenda hivyo so, phone ilienda hivyo and mpa, mpaka mpaka leo sijai msikia but the following day nilimsikia bado alikon to dem flani tu hapo 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 <laughs> okay so unfortunately these are some of the common cons that exist in Kenya and especially that one that Barry has just told us in Nairobi around that area you must be vigilant so let me join Sam and Elid on the stage as we enlighten you on how you can stay vigilant so Elid I'm sure listening to a lot of the stories that you heard from the audience you were just smiling because you realized that that's why it's called a con yes cuz uh, but I'm sorry for you guys <laughs> who have been conned <laughs> it's only that the information have not you've not known how to tackle it but con artist they look for vulnerability you're looking for a job a car some money you know and uh, it's really sad
to see that they are really, really, really messing up with so many people's lives. So why is it important that we report? Because I'm sure if I ask everyone outside of Made Paleju, what when I'm sure Hamku report, you say you still have the phone, you keep it like a memory. I'm sure Bari Maliuko, you see Muna Jogatwili and Ivy, did you report? No. So is that part of the problem? To some extent it is. Because you know when you report, even if it's not acted on, the police or the NPS, they're able to they're able to keep the data and to, um, to follow up on the crimes. Because like he said, the same man was at the same place yes. the next day pulling the same corn on a different person. Yes. And this is where we say security starts with you. If I cannot take care of, responsi be responsible of me, I cannot be responsible of my brother. So it is good to walk into a police station. It is free. I'm thankful to our able police service. Walk in, book an OB, get an OB and walk. And also we have with us Mumbi. Mumbi, I understand yours was a mobile banking con. I'm Mumbi Neritu. So nearly I lost my phone and my details with my ID with everything. And so the person who took my phone, Mnyaliba, went and withdrew all my 18,000 from my account. I don't know how they got access to my bank account, my PIN. I don't know how they got access to them. So security-wise, how, 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 how can that happen? Because if my phone got, gets lost today, I've locked it. You need to put the PIN to get in. And then even something like mobile banking, you need a PIN. Even yes. now to go further into somebody's account. So how are they able to wipe her out? This is what we call identity theft. And uh, mostly these are not people that are far from us. Either it's a friend, a family member, or a friend of a friend who knows you. And once they get your phone, they will master, they will take their time to learn your pattern, to learn your PIN, to learn your ID number, to learn everything about you. And once they have your phone, they are in. Okay, and Eli, maybe just to ask, because he raises a very valid point that uh, reporting is important. But do you think that perhaps why Kenyans don't report is they don't believe in the system? So when, they just accept, I've been conned, it's fine. I'll, I'll leave to tell the story another day and fight another battle. Uh, it's a, it's a general feeling that we have because, uh, see, this is a long process uh, that, well, a lot of us have reported and nothing has been done. But I would like to encourage people to actually report to the police because the police keep a database whereby they know uh, that this and this uh, crime is happening around this area. And so they are able to track and uh, follow up on these criminals who are committing these frauds. And what about the institutionalized type of fraud? Because I like, uh, I think we've had two cases from the SACO and as well somebody losing their entire retirement benefit. So how does the law compensate or follow up on their behalf? Well, as one joins a SACO or any institution, you sign up and apply to become a member of that SACO. And one of the ways that uh, we have a court system that is well known to actually follow up on some of this and ensure that there's justice to everyone. And therefore, if you, have, you are a victim of an uh, institutionalized uh, uh, crime, like uh, the circle uh, and, and all that, the bank stealing from you, one of the ways to actually deal with this is actually look for other people who have gone through the same similar experience and file a, 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 a class action against this institution. And if you file this action, uh, you, f uh, you actually filled up a form. You have a database, you have bank statements, which you are able to attach. And these uh, officials will be brought to book because uh, they are expected to be transparent and to ensure that uh, they deliver on what they are mandated to do. From a legal perspective, is there precedence whereby the class action has actually been successful? and the victims have recovered, if not all their money, part of their money? Yes, there are several cases that have been, uh, victims have been able to win against those institutions. Uh, and this is very encouraging to any of us who is a victim, that there is hope for you, that you can actually institute a, a suit, you can file a case, and uh, the directors or the officials of that institution will be brought to book. 
And maybe back to Sam from an institutional type of con, mm -hmm. because I couldn't help but notice that uh, how she was looked into the con initially. Aliambiwa peleka 100,000, it has a double. Don't people have to also, to some extent, stop, think, because what is this person doing with that money? And why do they need my little money if they are so good at making money? <coughs> Institutional conning, let me call it that way. First, I believe you want to invest and you have gone ahead, you've invested, or you, you want to make that step. There's what you call background check. There's what you call talking to people, trying to figure out, what, is this thing true? Is this thing really genuine? But most of them you'll find they are genuine because these people, like I said, they are patient and most of institutional conning, these people have money. So they have invested in first of all legalizing their business. But to some extent, when they achieve their goal, that's when you find things have scattered. But thanks to Elliot, he has affirmed to us that our institution, the court process, we can, the citizens can be able to get what is right for them. So Ali only mentioned data. So outside of the cons that we've had so far from the mm -hmm. guests, from the audience, is there any other type of con that is now more prevalent? Yes, there is one I've not, I don't think I've heard from the audience, where a person will call you, pretending to be a, an agent from a certain mobile subscriber, and he will ask you questions. And we live in an era of numbers, ID numbers, account numbers, PIN numbers, and these people, what they will try, they will jog you around numbers. Without you knowing, you'll give your ID number, you'll give your account number, you'll give you a PIN number, and before you know it, you don't have any money in your account. So we have to protect our security information. Yes, it is very vital. And considering the Huduma number is coming very soon, and that number con consists of each and every number. All your data. All your data. So identity, identity theft will be so easy. It will be so easy, but I believe the government, as it is said, it is taking precautions, measures. I hope you've enjoyed the show and that we uh, have actually taught you something on how to stay vigilant. Remember, do your background check. Do not trust the deal if it's too sweet. Ensure that you have your documentation in place. And just maybe, you may be one of the few who will actually stay safe and stay away from being conned. Well, that's it from me, Tamima. Until next time, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Special thanks to E-Plus for medic and ambulance services.